people going in so far but uh, what do we have here team one one fap the clap so born to bash and forsaken going for primorsk to loot up there so one potential conflict could arise pachinki as well has two teams trying to get a foothold and secure that position and still players continuing to parachute towards georgia pole to try and get that high concentrated loot area and gear up and be well established as they push into the end of the round now Roswick has a slim picking SDL going to Roswick games seem to work for them in the past they're going to loot up they had a little bit of uh, conflict earlier on a little bit of damage going on here and I think there's a roadkill coming in for the first blood and that is Sigzy coming in to Pancake Wild 47 not quite dead yet as you would say in the the holy grail I think you should just jump out of the vehicle and finish him with a punch. I don't understand why he's uh, deciding to go for just the roadkill. But as uh, Sigzy from uh, Legion will be going on. Anderside going in for the revive. I think he's going to give them a chance. No! The death comes in. Anderside unable to help out his teammate. And they will be one man down as the round will progress into the final circle. We do have an engagement here between the two teams. That is... Uh, Penta, let's jump on over here. Froz is taking a little bit of damage with the, the P19 coming in. Anyone else? It's a little bit of a stalemate between in the mansion. He's going to decide just to pick up the kill, but that is another pistol. Well, a couple of shots. There it is. Link with another headshot on the P1911. Good old famous weapon. And there he is going down. Obviously not respecting Whammon, but uh, that is a kill in the favor for Elixir. And uh, if I can just recall what team they are playing for, that would be fantastic. U Ultra Star, the last one remaining from Penta Esports, will be joining Melon in this compound just situated outside of the circle, as uh, the mansion does belong to Black's Gamer and his boys. As the fight continues on and we move on with our game the looting stage still in well still the very lethal looting stage high risk high reward especially if you're trying to get them points of for kills to try and improve your rankings in the game so uh, there are some options of how you can play it and i think that's the the nice factor of having points awarded for kills is that you can choose a defensive route but you are forced to try and make some kills to you know be be more ballsy. We want to see some ballsy plays. We want it. We want these nails in the coven delivered, signed, sealed, and delivered by these teams saying, you know what? I will claim your body. That sounds like a euphemism, but we'll roll with it. It's fine. So uh, it's all about the intuition and, and risk taking. Uh, makes it a little bit more exciting. As we jump over to Noble. Gearing up with a relatively good loot as they were continuing on their journey with a crate drop potentially dropping over their heads. No crate drop does event. It's going to be potentially landing over on the eastern side of the map. After the Raptor mix is when holding on here ibiza havoki raptor up to andy Paro, all alive and well and ataxia just around the corner melon going up north to try and continue looting the small peppering of buildings around and we do have a crate landing precariously in pachinki to entice these two teams to try and go out it's off constant and uh they they could they could grab this we'll jump over here to heat war I'm pronouncing that correctly. Please forgive me. Hetror. Or Hetror. Or Het. Rar. Pick up the level 2 helmet. Get on the way. Go for the crate. Energetic turtle. All by himself. Where's the rest of his teammates? That is the question. Scattered around in Gatka. He's going to be scouting. Trying to go for these uh, the farm area. Enrico Macia. Looting up by the bridge just east of the tier town. This is the Spart Makers. We do have a fight 
coming in unconspicuous. It is Forsaken putting up a fight here. One tap, fap, the clap. Coming in. Seems to be relatively well geared. And let's see how he picks up on this fight. Turn on X-ray. He has one player in front of him. Probably going to manage to peek and see him around the corner. He sees the head sticking out. I don't think he's aware of his positioning. One tap, one fap, the clap. Just to add to... Oh, the, the bullet shot's coming into... <laughs> Inconspicuous picking up uh, El Maniaco. Team heads up. One, one tap, taking up some damage, trying to give up. But there it is. The SK-12 coming in and Forsaken are eliminated. And they will be able to capitalize on this. And that is a... I thought that was teabagging, but, uh, you know. You got, when, you, when you're gearing up, you got to be sneaky. You got to stay agile. You don't want to sit still. George Pulse seems to be relatively calm. Three teams, though. No one really uh, trying to contest each other. They're well spaced out, so no fights here in the Georgia Pole area. So we shall see how they uh, move in. The circle is going to be coming in eventually. Now it is the blue finally encroaching on the horizon. And we'll see how they uh, will go in. HC's here. We have uh, the two teams still at a stalemate in Pachinki. I'm not sure who's going to come out on top. Chevalier Panda. Who is Chevalier Panda playing for? I'm not sure. I don't know. It's uh, Hell's Kitchen. Stalemate in Pachinki. Hell's Kitchen against Off Constantly. Is anyone going to dare to engage in the situation? They're right in the middle of the circle. There's no rush for them to try and pull a fight out of each other. But I believe they can remain relatively calm and composed and, and not have to go through too many resources so early on in the game. But it would be fantastic if they do manage to secure Pachinki and uh, set up a nice defensive foothold to stop any sort of teams from pushing in and trying to nab a building to stay safe within. But we do have some roof campers, if I could say so, for lack of a better word. Some, some, some vultures ready to swoop down and eat their prey. Music is being wary. Curious to see their positioning. I believe they're just trying to bait out a couple of shots. And I'm not sure if they know what is going on. It's just a little bit of a stalemate. Not much engagement's happening elsewhere on the map. It is all about Pachinki right now. The dubs crouched on the roof. He notices a bead of sweat rolling down his forehead as he wipes it off in a fluster. An uneasy, but exciting feeling fills his gut as he ready to pounce and engage the target. Not enough information is given to him. This is uh, the quietest engagement I've ever noticed. Let's go over to uh, Noble East. <laughs> Noble GG over here. Potentially getting a little bit more excitement going on. Some vehicles for them to move out and a nice convoy. Alex Underside will be picking off a couple of shots, but with four vehicles means a lot of distractions. Potentially could a flip could come into play. Interrogate is back in the game. We have the similar Edaculus is not playing. So the shot some shots coming in. And I believe that's Andersid trying to put off and throw some spanners into the works for Noble. But uh, they, 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 could, they could take this fight. I believe they're at a similar altitude. No, they're not. They have the height disadvantage, but they do have some trees protecting them. But if you're just tuning in, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to round three of the awesome GG playtest. This is playtest number nine with one more playtest to go. Playtest 10 will be wrapping up our playtests. And launching something special soon. Famous words. 
And here we have these two teams still holding on, not doing anything too much as Ezek does get taken out. I believe that was Heatror picking up a frag there, and Chevalier Panda will have to pick him up. But I'm not sure if anyone is having any sort of fight. We do have a fight here. It's uh, Odin Thor, so it's Legion. Let's jump on over to Milta and see how this fight is unraveling. So it's similar stalemate between the two teams. We have Ataxia here. Not sure where Enix are. Product NV is completely alone. Drayden, Anonymous, and Voxic always spreading out. This is a, a standard tactic we see from Enix is that they like to spread out and loot up and then conjure together while they bring into the fights, but we do have this situation brewing in Pachinki. Not any deaths going on as Pachinki con con continues to stay inside the safe playable area. But Odi Panda will be moving on out. I'm curious to see. We have uh, TSM. L I think that's a watchtower. No, it's just a. They're on a. It's a little ridge there between the school. We have two crates coming in, and I think Keytrot will be going in. So off constantly will be potentially going for the crate drop. It's not too far away. A couple of hundred meters for them to run. Oh, actually, it's. A, um, excuse, excuse me. I thought that was a. A, a, a new drop. He looks up at the sky, considering if there is a crate job coming. No crate job found. He fails in his casting, and he continues onwards to have a look at Ataxia here. Trying to set up... Uh, this is a lovely position for them to hold, as uh, it is going to be Enix and Ataxia again holding neighboring houses, as we do have Noble... GG pushing in and Terrigate doing an uh, what's that what is a stoppy? I don't know, I don't know the terms of the kids kids nowadays. I don't, I don't know what's the terminology is confusing. Not so sure. As the rest of Noble pull into the circle, you've got to be joking. Three teams, three hard hitters for that matter, coming into very close proximity of each other to take possession and hold of these buildings. And I'm not sure who has the highest, uh, the best. Viewpoint as of right now, I think it would be safe to say that uh, Ataxia could have the best building currently, um, as terms of if they can get enough information to shut down any sort of pushes onto their location. Uh, how Noble do have a bit more deflate and more cover for a defensive hold, and Ataxia here are relatively, you know, well situated for a fight. If there happens to be one in the valley in front of them. Well, let's go to one head as if they see a couple of players jumping out. Who is that? It's Karyala and Priston driving on by. Priston taking a lot of damage. Probably not looking so great for him as a couple of shots zip through that doorway. Causing Miguel to retreat and not be able to put enough damage to contest the players and capitalize on a kill. But uh, Karyala is here. And uh, now it's a question of who's in top four. There's the peak from Priston as the oh, the revive will come in. He's a little bit exposed. Eightsy, the top fragger of the last round. I could say he's the MVP of the previous round. Trying to pick out the details and take this territory, this hilltop, as they move into position. The circle hasn't shifted yet. It still hasn't moved. Three seconds remaining for the remaining players to start moving inwards. And there it is, the shots from that suppressed gun coming in. Uh, Taxia or Enix down in the hill, trying to put some shots onto Juan Hedas. And they're between a rock and a hard place right now, ladies and gentlemen. Pinned between two strong teams, but Juan Hedas, I believe that they can pull it off. They are a highly skilled, strong, tightly knit squad. And they will make Appropriate decisions, hopefully, as they move into this, as a car 98 bullet zips by. Let's jump over to Penta. We have Ultra Star and Melon driving on in with the Lada. 
And could they... They might... They're gonna run into a lot of squads as they try and cross this vast expense of open field. They do have some deflate which they need to get around if they want to remain safe. But unfortunately, the terrible shots coming in, not connecting with them. They're gonna stay safe as Mixes win, holding on to this position and waiting for an opportunity. Let's go to Car Jalaya. If I can just uh, pull up their team information, I would be able to find out what team they are playing for. I think Kevin's. This is Team Oxygen Esports. Team Oxygen against one ahead as Penta driving on in by the ridge. Completely unaware of the strong positioning being held by the majority of the teams remaining in this circle. 72 players remaining and things are going to steam up. Envy does get taken down. Zanfa goes in to do a final inspection, pick up the loot. Well, let's go back to this fight between Kar Jalaya, the third, not to mistake his title. Seems like a nobleman. But does he dress as well as his name is in status? That is the main question, ladies and gentlemen. Let's go here to the south side. We have Forsaken Alice Malice. And a little bit of a circle hugging fight. And, you know, a bit of an equal fighting ground between the two teams. We have the next circle coming into play. And there it is. <laughs> Ending up by the farms. And uh, Alice Malice trying to pick up a shot here. And I'm not sure if anyone's going to be moving in just yet. Ewan Hardcore is just outside with his team. So Continuum could go in but they're gonna have a difficult journey trying to get by all these players holding on to this situation with peak coming in and alice malice manages to pick up that sks headshot another two tags but not enough the revive will come into play this is a chance for them to use that momentum and try and push on in but it is a very expensive play if they decide to go forward to this perhaps unconspicuous from forsaken has a little bit of a vantage point that could assist in them trying to eliminate this. The smokes have been deployed. He manages to see the backpack of that player from Continuum. Excuse me, that is not Continuum. It's Spart Makers. Spart Makers just around the corner. We have the vehicle starting to move in. Mixes win holding on here. They're not going to have any visitors driving on by, as we do have this push coming in from Unconspicuous, deciding to go all the way. Balls to the wall. Hardcore. Can he be victorious in this engagement as long as Forsaken, his teammates, manage to hold on and distract and continue suppressing the fire? He managed to spot, pick up one, knock out. Can he pick it up to a second one? He's right in the faces of the enemy. Bart makers, can they hold on? Blue who off constantly suffering heavy casualties up in the north. As Conspicuous trying to pick up a shot, Alice managed making to bring in the headshot and with the SKS. And now they just want to pick up the kills. Unconspicuous grab, grabbing one point as one player remains from Spart Makers. And Unconspicuous is hungry. He's got the taste of blood in his mouth and he is not going to give up easily. It's he's going to peek and try and push up onto the player. But probably his teammates saying it's not worth it. Retract. Retreat. Let's get into the circle. We don't have much time. 13 seconds remaining on the clock. And they do have a significant amount of distance to cover. And this is a smart play for them to do as I move in and set up for the next circle. Now I'm curious to see here with Noble essentially touching shoulders with the Taxia. Enix also in the, in, the, in the mix but not so much for them to worry about. They do pick up a kill there. Odi Panda falls as uh, Voxic picks up a frag there for his team. As Daz is going to be calm and waiting for an opportunity. There are the shots coming in. And that is one headers. With Isaac trying to aim down the site to find and connect with those shots. But it's not working out with them. The suppressor could come into play a little bit. Hiding his position. But I think they are aware. And one headers will try and back off of this fight. 
They do have the high ground. They can play the waiting game and abate in the team to try and knock them out. But it is a little bit of an expensive. They don't have any flankers coming in. Corn checkers behind them. So one does need to stay on their toes to try and stay alive. But Isaac will be pushing up very slowly to try and get more information. Potentially bait out one head as... There just seems to be a lack of play. They don't need to move anywhere. The circle is right in their lap. Miko peeking the headshot. Doesn't manage to connect with that one. But I believe the helmet does get taken off. I'm not mistaken. Who needs doors when you got car 98s? Circle moving towards the northeast. And this will force all these top hitting teams to engage each other, which is absolutely fantastic. And this is what we want to see, ladies and gentlemen. And I think Enix will be picking up most of the kills if they are vigilant and manage to spot out the teams as they try and push up onto the hill. So attacks here are going to be moving out. Enix, Voxic trying to get some information, peek around, but he doesn't want to reveal himself too much as he is wary of the positioning of Noble just around the corner. Hexeti will be driving right under their nose and trying to escape. There come the shots, the rain of bullets, but the Lada will hold it together and manage to get them right into the next circle and probably take this wizard tower, which has Alex06 in it. And they are exposed here. They need to get into cover quick before Alex06 and his team decide to pick up and capitalize on their mistake. They were being exposed for just a little bit too long, but they do manage to stay safe as Noble will be pushing into the circle as well. A couple of shots coming in from Hack City. Ataxia wanting to take out Noble as early as possible. But we do have a fight here still going on. Eightsy lobbing a grenade. One head is trying to clear and clean up this ridge here which is a very powerful vantage point for them to have as the next zone will be revealing itself in about 30 seconds well a little bit more than 30 seconds mr falls a good a good a good minute and a half before we they will have to be forced to move but team heads up damien seven from forsaken try manages to spot noble just around the corner there he's gonna peek I'm not sure he's revealed his position now so Noble are gonna be more vigilant and careful with their positioning one two three two shots in as car 98 shot coming out from the side team heads up trying to provide some assisting fire and Noble are holding on not an ideal situation they're gonna have to pull out of this fight or maybe reassess their position so I don't think they realize that team heads up picking up the frag onto Daz's but not much more they can do three UAZ that is if you can't find cover bring cover with you ladies and gentlemen a nice decision from Noble but you know those vehicles do explode and they can provide a significant amount of damage between the twos as Damon is gonna go for the for the kill He's going to go for the push. He's going to whip out the shotgun. The extended mag at half, but he's revealed himself a bit too soon. His teammates need to support him and show him the, that he can care, but he does manage to come out. Picks out one shot. Can he stay alive? Holding onto a quarter as Zanfa manages to take out another player. Alice Malice, excuse me. And Damon is right under Noble's nose. He has the cover, which has turned around to be in his favor instead of Noble's. And this could be a clean sweep for them as he tries to push in. Here it is. Could this be the penultimate play? Will Damien pay the price or will he be victorious to try and peek? He is revealed, but he's going to retract from his push as he tries to find an angle to pull off the shot. But he pays the price for peeking too early as Paradox, excuse me, a boon takes him out. And we can return to the map and have a look at this situation. Does cool down, cool off. And the circle falls into the favor of TSM, who have been managing to survive with three kills under their belt for this round. So they could pick up and finish quite high up this time if they play it right, keep their composure, and play it cool. In the next couple of minutes before the round concludes, Corn Shuckers are going to be putting up a fight against them. Zampa taking a lot of damage. As they do have a wild card coming, team heads up deciding to drive on by right between the crossfire of TSM and Corn Shuckers. 
But I think that's a uh, break manages to pick off. Team heads up. And the shot's coming in. Zampa completely unaware. Oh, another wild card being thrown in. As ENV manages to take out Energetic Turtle here. Keep things going as Enix are pushing up. They have Atsy here from one headers. The last remaining player, his buddy Turtle, is knocked out. A couple of pot shots here and there. And a car 98 for him to work with. As he peeks, he does take a significant amount of damage. But his military 3 vest manages to keep him together. And we'll have to quickly first aid. Oh, he's going to pay the price for not being able to connect those shots as Enix. I'm going to be trying to push up onto him. Make things difficult. And there it is, the circle coming in. And it's not looking good for Aitzi. Will he survive this? It seems very unlikely as that circle will slowly choke him out. He can just All he can do is try and hold alive. The suppressive fire comes in from the team. And uh, let's have a look here. We have this. We have this. Still using this rock. Envy just in front of him, staying alive. They have the circle to their advantage, so they are looking good for the time being. But they could get a flank from behind on the hill from just north of them. As Blue Crew from off constantly with his teammate Heatror staying alive. Appears to be outside the circle. Does get knocked out by Noble. That was Boom taking out the shirt and Hexede taking out Dragon, Dradon and Voxic. So two players from Enix gone. Hexede managing to stay alive. And I think Enix are out of the equation for trying to place up on the leaderboard. And the strongest squad by sheer numbers right now is just TSM with a circle to their advantage. They have everything falling into place. Their positioning is ideal. The circle is ideal. They have an opportunity to pull in a podium victory, at least, this time around. But Envy is being cautious, careful, watchful and observant, trying to find an opportunity for him to pounce. But he needs to be wary before he decides to make any sort of movement to try and push up. Shots coming in right into the face of TSM. Hexeta gets taken out by AMPR. And it's not looking good for them. Nice, uh, nice camera. A couple of shots coming in. That's Envy coming in to try and contest this situation. And that is one beautiful ragdoll, ladies and gentlemen. But let's get back to the fight. This is alive. A potential flank from behind as Noble will try to push up. They have a clear route to try and move up, but they don't have the information to make the bold play to push up. Blue Who is going to manage to be a snack and push into that final circle for off constantly. And he has three kills, so his squad did manage to pull in a decent amount of frags in during this game. But the question is, who will be coming up victorious we have Miracu just around the corner as well Four, five teams remaining ladies and gentlemen suspense and pressure is starting to build up the cognitive load impedes itself upon these players minds and who's going to be shutting down Who's approach onto this? TSM, relatively well set up. Need to move a little bit to get into the circle. They are at a hill disadvantage. T-Bone TV, Marchu and Blue who are holding the high ground. Break, Aim Pro and Vis need to decide a mo movement. Envy taking a little bit of damage as that SKS comes in from Aim PR. They're going to hold it on. Noble. Holding the high ground. Having one of the furthest distances to travel. Beginning their push. Towards the center of the circle. 
couple of shots here and they do manage to pick it up now tsm realize that they have a window of opportunity to push up and resituate themselves manage to spot noble Again, their crosshairs as the shot comes in from Marchu, a wild card from the side. This game's managing to knock out interrogate with the UMP, and one player remains. As Boom is the last remaining player, but there is the shot coming in from the side. TSM are completely helpless, scattered. Break is going to be taking a significant amount of damage. This trying to hold his team together as the circle tries to reveal itself he goes prone manages to pick up the kill with a ump9 t-bone is down it is three teams remaining is a 1v1v1 position and there it is tsm managed to pick up victory and first place in round three of playtest number nine so there you have it, ladies and gentlemen tsm with first place noble coming into second with a significant amount of kills only belonging to boom though a little bit of more passive play blue who and off constantly coming in with a noble amount of kills as well uh eight kills for that team and uh we have t-bone and them 